So this is my 1994 NA8 Miata turbocharged. It still needs to get tuned, so I don't know the power output, but we're guessing it's gonna be around 275, 300 max if I wanna blow up the engine, but we're not gonna blow up the engine. So the biggest thing with the Miata kit, I will start, is uh, wheels. So let's talk about wheels. So currently I'm rocking some 16 by 12 and a half negative 65s on my Miata. These are Hydron reels. Hydron's my brand. I've made these and designed them. So I'm uh, not sure if I'm gonna sell these yet, but this is the first iteration and one of one set in the world. The biggest issue with the Miata is finding right size wheels. Um, right size wheels makes a big difference because you just don't want to slap on some 15 by 8s, 15 by 7s, 16 by 7s, 16 by 8s, 9s, 10s, because it's not enough for this car. If you use something that narrow, you're going to need to space it out. And then from the back, your rubber is going to look super tiny because you've just spaced out some really narrow wheels. So the best thing to do, find yourself some wide wheels. For the Miata, I would say 15 by 12s. 15 by 12 and a half, 15 by 13 maybe on the rear if you could find some wide slicks. 16s will probably be my choice because 15s won't fill up the gap as much. If you look up uh, Rick's Red NA in Ireland, just Google Speed Hunters, Rocket Bunny, Miata and you'll find Rick's article. He is rocking 15 by 8s, 9s, maybe 15 by 10s, but as you can see, he is super slammed and he still has wheel gap. And that's the biggest problem with this kit is wheel gap. No matter what you do, you're going to have wheel gap because if you rock this kit without wheel gap, guess what's going to happen? I'll show you because I took off the fenders on this side. Look at this. This tire I'm using is a 23 and a half inch OD and it's barely, barely clearing the setup right now. This is about half an inch. So half an inch is not a lot. This isn't my final uh, setup right now, to be honest, because I think this is a little low. I mean, my suspension setup is stiff right now, so I don't think I'll have a problem driving it like this, but I want a little bit more clearance so I can have a little bit more suspension travel. So what I'm saying is you cannot have your car super slammed unless you notch your frame, tub your frame, or, uh, a lot of custom work. <laughs> so most of us Miata guys will not spend that kind of money because it's a lot of money to spend just to fit the flares. So this is half inch. That's all we have left. If you go on this side, it looks like we have a finger gap, which I'm pretty sure it is a finger gap. Yeah, so it is a finger gap. So you can't get rid of that gap because on the other side, as you can see without the fenders, there's no room to go any lower. Now, you can lower the car a little bit more closer to the ground if, say, you use 15s or 14s. So, you know, the diameter is gonna be smaller, which means you're gonna be lower to the ground, but you're still gonna have that gap. Regardless of what you do, you're gonna have that gap. The guys running uh, this kit online without gap, their cars are basically not drivable. <laughs> uh, Miata Jimmy, if you look him up on Instagram, he's a pretty cool guy. Uh, I forgot where he's from, but he's not in the US. He used to have a slam setup on our triple eights, and I think there were 15s, and he just, he raised it because it's not drivable. It's not fun to have, uh, you know, that kind of ride height because you scrape everything. And I mean, this car, you're gonna scrape your, your oil pan, your subframe, your butterfly brace, if you have a butterfly brace like I do right there. I got a rag right there because I'm working on the car right now. But you're gonna scrape everything if you're gonna slam this car. And that's just the biggest thing. If you want this kit, just remember, you're gonna have wheel gap. And I don't have a problem with that because my Cayman, look at this thing. That is perfection right there. That wheel gap, that's, that's even more than my Miata. And it looks perfect. I don't need to be super slammed. If I wanted to be super slammed and park it, I'd have just gotten airbags. So that's another option. If you want to slam this car and have it park, get airbags. You can always slam it. But remember, when you drive, you're going to have to raise the car regardless. And I think coils versus bags, coils is the way to go because you can drive static 
low, no problem. But if you have bags and you drive this low, they're kind of soft, so you're gonna hit your fender. So when you buy this kit, make sure you get wide tires and wide wheels because it's gonna look funny from the back if you don't fill it up properly. Um, just like the Cayman right here. If I didn't have wide tires, this whole setup would look so funny from the back. <laughs> so when you install this kit, regardless if you buy the real or the fake, you're gonna need to trim key areas. And those key areas, the front bumper right here, right behind the, uh, the fender line, you need to cut this whole thing out. And the OE bumper actually goes all the way out to here. So you're gonna need to cut that out. A lot of people DM me and like, hey, my front bumper won't fit. And you know, when I turn my wheel, it hits. Well, yeah, you have to trim it. You have to trim that whole thing. And also back here, this is the lower side skirt kind of portion of the fender flare. You're gonna need to cut all the way to the wall right here. And inside right here, there's an actual, uh, like, a, like a pinch weld for the, like the sheet metal. You're gonna need to hammer that in flat. If you don't, the wheel is gonna hit it when you turn, and you're gonna have problems. And right here, you need to actually, this isn't bolted, that's why it's all wonky, because I have side skirts, my side skirts are being painted right now. But you need to make sure that this is flush with a door panel. See that? It needs to be flush. Some people will install this kit and they don't, they don't make this flush. And if you don't make this perfectly flush with this, that means you're too far forward in the front. That means this right here is too far forward and then you're all off. So just make sure when you're doing this side right here to make it flush with a door line. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I have a whole video and it's about an hour and a half long or so, I forgot what it is, on how to fit this body kit on this channel. So just go back a few episodes or type in Rocket Bunny Miata install video and it'll pop up. If you want that super slammed look, it's almost impossible without doing bags and without tubbing the car or doing tube frame because there's just no space. As you can see, this right here, I have barely any space, but over here, it looks like I have a one finger gap. And you know, that's just, that's just how it is with a Rocket Bunny kit. When Mira-san, the owner of Rocket Bunny Pandem, uh, was here, I asked them, hey man, why did you make this car like so high, like the, the fender line, why'd you make it so high? And he said, so it's, if it was like 13, 14, yeah. then it would definitely be much lower. Yeah. But to, and 15 will be a little bit pushing it, but yeah. definitely for 16 and to fit the 16, yeah. it will have to go up much higher compared to like trying to fit a 13, 14 inch. Okay. Yeah. Mm. If you're not going that high on the fender, then the, the front lip and the side skirt has to go lower, lower yeah. to get that same effect. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my, my rear tire right there mm -hmm. is actually one inch from the top of the tub, mm -hmm. which is crazy. Oh. And it still looks like I have two finger gap. Uh, it's... Uh, no, インナーフェンダーもワンインチぐらい、25mmぐらいしかもうスペースがもうない状態で。だけどそんなにベタベタに車高は下がってる風には見えないけど、まあそこら辺がどうなのかなっていう。So <笑> you basically made it so you can slam it but still drift without rubbing the fenders. Right. Okay. Cool. Well, that's what I figured. <笑> This kit wasn't even supposed to be made 
Uh, that was supposed to be like a one-off thing. He made it because people liked it. He released the render and people were like, oh, that's so cool. So he was like, all right, cool, I'll make it, I guess, because he was just kind of playing around on a one-off setup. So that's kind of like the lowdown on the history of the uh, NAA Rocket Bunny kit. And on the back right here, the spoiler, and I just kind of want to clarify this, that's a spoiler, and this is a wing. A lot of people think they're kind of the same thing or interchangeable names, but they're not. That's a wing, this is a spoiler. So we're actually making a version two spoiler, and it's gonna be rounded. This thing looks kind of uh, too sharp for the Miata, really, because the Miata is a very rounded car, right? The whole kit is all bubbly and rounded. This one came off his like 180SX kit, kind of more like 80s style. So I told him, and he knows. He was just like, yeah, I know, I know, I know. And uh, he finally made a version two, which I'll throw in like a really cheesy video because he sent it to me via text. And uh, it takes, I don't know, a few weeks to get the final pieces out. But um, with this coronavirus shit going on, I'm not sure if we're going to have it available anytime soon. But I'm assuming it's going to be ready in the next two months. So that will be freaking awesome. And oh, random thing. These are my Hydron taillights. I know some of you guys have been following this build. You've seen this before, but just FYI, these are the aluminum final versions. They look freaking cool. I should turn them on, huh? Boom, that's how they look on. So badass. So much brighter in person, as you can see. So awesome. I'm still behind on producing these because of uh, coronavirus and redesigns and new uh, vendors and whatnot, but I'll catch up one of these days and I'll have some more. But uh, that's pretty much it. Everything you need to know about the Miata wide body kit from Rocket Bunny. Oh,